Hi everyone and welcome to our podcast and our YouTube channel called Ladies in Leadership. Uh, thank you for joining us and just as a reminder we're here to empower women from, from all over the globe um, on all things uh, motivation, confidence, resiliency, conquering the imposter um, and mental well-being. So today is a very exciting episode because we have a lovely guest with us all the way from the other side of the world um, in Singapore. So this is Hema Dadwell, who you can see on the screens at this moment. So I'm just... Hey, Nari. Hey. Hi, everyone. Great to have Hi. you here, Hema. It's lovely to have you here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give a, a little introduction about who she is so you can get to know her a little bit and then I'm sure she'll give you lots more information as we go through the interview. So she is um, nature loving, high vibe, high energy, vibrant, uh, very vibrant and charismatic in her personality. She's self driven and an inspiration to many, both elders and children alike. Um, her love for nature and her belief in holistic creativity inspired her to utilize uh, this platform to share her experiences um, in life, living a simple yet stylish life. She was born in Himachal um, in Pradesh in India, but has had um, the great fortune of traveling the world with her family from Melbourne to Cape Town, Monte Carlo, London, Durban to name a few and now she's been in Singapore uh, for the last 12 years which is where she lives um, and one of the realizations that she had which I'm sure she's going to um, develop on in, in the interview is that no matter which culture or which background you come from um, everybody needs a holistic life in order to live a happy and fulfilling life she also has a bachelor's degree which has also helped to further shape her knowledge um, and her lifestyle. Um, she's been an e educator in various international schools um, in Singapore. Um, she's also a program leader for a mental health program currently. She's passionate about serving and giving back, so serving others and giving back to the community, community with positivity, um, all things mental health and well-being. At present she's uh, very busy making videos um, on her YouTube uh, channel to uh, motivate and influence others about her holistic life, about fitness, about uh, uh, fashion and also about positive energy. So um, without further ado, Hema, let's get straight into the interview. Yes, so, let's start. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So to start with, I, I want to ask you a basic question. What does mindfulness mean to you? Wow. Mindfulness, actually, uh, for me, mindfulness is being in present moment all the time. <laughs> Be aware, conscious about your present moment and just stay in that. And um, for me, actually, because I love to lead a holistic lifestyle. So for me to be have a mind which is peaceful and calm and positive and a body which is healthy and fit and your soul, which is absolutely uh, have a, you know, this attitude of gratitude mm -hmm. and just stay in present moment with this attitude of gratitude. That's mindfulness for me. Yeah. So because, you know, Nari, we have so many things to be grateful about, right? Yeah. Yeah. So many things that a simple thing like I am alive, I can breathe, I have two hands, you know. So when we are busy in this attitude of gratitude, we don't have a time for any stress, any anxiety or, you know, to get entangled with the other stuff. So yeah. I think, yeah, that's my mantra. Yeah. Being present. I absolutely love that because really, truly, that's all you have in your control and in your power. So about embracing life in the current moment is experiencing life to its fullest. So thank you very much. Uh, that, that I totally resonate and agree with the, your words. So um, with that, if you could share with our audience, what are your daily mindful practice practices that aid your well-being and all the different facets you just described there? G give us a little insight into your daily practices. Oh, yes. So my daily practice actually uh, first start with, you know, because I believe, as I told you, I believe in holistic living. So with 
that add the mindfulness you know so i start with the morning my morning starts with a three glass of water which is good for your gut you know yeah. so after that i sit here for uh, breathing exercises and then i do my jal niti which is again a very ancient old practice which i'm doing it from last 10 years and it is a beautiful practice which helps to cleanse your system you know so i do that and then i uh, do my little bit of breathing practice again and then do my oil pulling and oil pulling again is a gut cleanser activity that i finish all these activities doesn't take much time actually it just take a little bit of your time but then i you have to be mindful that you yes you want to give yourself good start and then i hit a gym with the you know oil in my mouth i do my exercise i give my this gift of movement they say that movement is medicine so i never fail to give this in early mornings either i go for a walk five or five or six k walk which i do every day or a sun salutation i make sure that i'm doing 25 sun salutations without a skip and um, i'm very happy to tell that i have never skipped from last at least from last 5 6 years i have never skipped doing it so these are the practices which i do and um, yeah i'm going great with that <laughs> it sounds amazing to to hear you say those things and there are quite a few things that you describe but as you say it doesn't take a lot a lot of time so really anybody can integrate those practices into their life if they want to but it's about researching and finding out how to do them properly um i absolutely love the what you said about um movement um and you know being physically active because i think that really helps uh, to make make you mentally uh, focused as well um and obviously it's really good for your body um the one thing that yeah. you didn't mention the one thing that you didn't mention that i wanted to ask you was about what about um food so when you talk about your body how what are your food practices oh yes food practices like uh, it's they say you know you are what you eat mm -hmm. so uh, if you see my youtube channels i always uh, you know uh, give a recipe or something which i eat personally so my food practices is like though in singapore you know everybody eat outside everybody there's a hawker centers there's a lot of variety but i make sure that i uh, in a week five days a week i eat home cooked food because that's the best food and i prefer and avoid all packaged food yeah so that is the practice which i try to follow as much you know as much as possible because i never uh indulge in but yes you go and explore outside that's fine but most of the time i prefer home cooked food and if you see like most of the time our platter my food platter is always like 70% of greens and the rest is all proteins and all that so yeah and i'm very fortunate nari my husband is also like like minded guy so you know no stress <laughs> we both like practice the same kind of <laughs> that's right so you can both kind of enjoy the same sort of food because you um because you like it yeah. and it's good for you um and obviously like they say food is nourishing for the soul so you are what you eat so you you're also um, not in terms of like literally your size but also how you feel um because the uh, yes. nourishing mm -hmm. properties which affect our hormones and affect our emotional energy as well so um I really love that and and I know for a lot of people food is a struggle because it's also considered a pleasure in life um and like you you say you know having a takeaway or eating out at a restaurant might be something that you do for for fun or, or something that you enjoy but it's not necessarily something that you make a habit out of that you do every day whereby if you eat at home you can control what's on your plate you can control how many greens there are what proteins you have uh and what fibers so um so yeah that sounds amazing thank you very much for sharing that one more point nari which i always like you know uh, make it that's my daily habit which is like eating slow oh. eating mindfully yeah because that way you know you are uh, you are actually um, you can able to taste the things you know from like the real flavor of it so you eat it and then you are doing 70% of work here itself this you know when your gut is good 
you are helping your gut you're helping your body so you're digesting your food here when you're chewing it properly so you're not giving your you know, rest of the work to your system your intestine so you're yeah. you know so that is a practice which i i really really highly recommend to everyone mm -hmm. eat take your time don't just hog food eat mindfully eat slowly enjoy your every bite yeah yes yeah. i read something earlier about a mindfulness in terms of like when we're mindful we're living each moment with intention so what you're talking about is eating with intention and obviously we all we all have to eat uh, and doing that Absolutely, in a very yeah. mindful way um there's something that i posted recently which just brought about um on my instagram which was about saying the gut is your third brain and i know so many people who suffer gut issues because they haven't dealt with other issues like emotional or psychological so if you can eat mm -hmm. well like you say and you can your gut is healthy then that determines everything in terms of including how well you function and how you show up in life so that's really useful Absolutely. to know that's really useful yes. thank you um thank you and then um, the next question is and it's because I thought of this because I thought this is a brilliant question from you because you, you, you're born in India, right? So you're from Asia, you're living in Singapore. Um, obviously in the Western world, which is where I'm at, I've been brought up here, I've worked here and I've met many women um, in the Western world. And I find like a lot of things like, for example, yoga, meditation, holistic lifestyle, Aruweather, all of these things, they come from um, India and they come from Asia. So with yeah. with your yeah. upbringing and everything you you ha you have in terms of your toolkit and your knowledge in holistic lifestyle, what specifically from your roots and your Indian heritage um, would you like to share that's taught you this holistic lifestyle that other people can benefit from? Well, uh, you know, uh, in India, you know, uh, and I've been very fortunate because my father was in army. So, you know, I have actually diverse culture. I have experienced all that. And this holistic lifestyle I've seen since the beginning, my grandmother practicing that, you know, we in India, you know, we have this joint family system. You're watching your siblings, you're watching your parents, elders, and then you, you know, learn from them. So as a kid, I have just watched them doing all that. So whatever the, all these, you know, uh, practices I'm talking, be it a Jalniti, be it a oil pulling, all these practices I've seen since childhood, uh, my elders doing it. And I have seen Nari, my father, who is uh, in a good age now, but how well, like still I can call my dad a young boy, you know, he's, his life practices, his discipline uh, of taking care of himself is like beautiful. So I feel these all uh, practices are all age old practices in, you know, all ancient practices, but it's a big gift to us. And we should actually, uh, you know, do it with our open hand, open mind, uh, learn it while like, as I was like telling somebody, some of my friends like Jal Niti, they look very complicated, but it's as simple as drinking the water, you know? Who can say that drinking water is a difficult thing? I don't think so anyone because everyone drinks. So all these practices are also as simple, but once you get hooked with it and you learn it, then they are as simple and, but they are small practices give you a big results. It gives you a big results or in a term that you can avoid uh, pills, medicines and all that. And, you know, you can just remain healthy without all that. So yeah, like they say, Mother Nature has all the medication you need. And if you yeah. embrace that, you won't ever need to go to a doctor again, which would be amazing, right? <laughs> absolutely. I absolutely believe this because they say, you know, flow with the nature. Yeah. So if you're flowing with the nature, nature helps you to flourish. It absolutely does. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Amazing. What about things like, uh, do you... Um, in, um, engage in meditation in yoga practices like that of course yes meditation yeah. is a very important uh, um, aspect of my life yeah because spirituality i believe uh, you know it gives you a real um, real wisdom i feel that i feel everyone they say 
uh, we think that you know it's only the learned or uh, you know people with a very high qualification they are intelligent but no everyone is intelligent they have, everyone have a inner wisdom and this inner wisdom grows when you go in silence yeah so you can be more creative you can be more productive mm. so meditation is very important part of my um, lifestyle mm. i practice it uh, in the morning and i practice before going to bed so these are the two times where i am very particular to practice because they say when you go within then there is a big world to discover <laughs> yeah there yeah. as well yeah. Yeah. All in, like you say, it's all internal. There's so much self-awareness and within that there is so much wisdom. Like you said, you can learn so much um, in the world of academia. You can get all the qualifications that you want. But really, until you go inside and see what, what internally is going on, what your self-awareness is, um, that's the greatest. Absolutely, yeah. And I totally agree with you, you know, uh, doing yoga or, or meditation. Um, you know, I, I, I do yoga and I've done it for a number of years, not as often or frequently as I'd like to. So for example, I don't do it every day. Uh, that would be great. Um, but like uh, meditation could be something as simple as walking in the woods or walking out in nature. Because you're when you're connecting with a natural surrounding, your mindset just it slows down and you're just in a different vibe, right? And you can think of things and focus on things that are actually important to you. And information just comes to you because you've not got any distractions. So it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be sitting down and staring at an object for 15 minutes, which some people find uncomfortable, although that's a very well-known way of doing it and it's a very good way of doing it. But it can be a number of things, but I, I, I very much agree. It's really good to quieten, and, quieten the mind down, create calmness and relaxation within um, within ourselves absolutely nari i have made actually a intense long video youtube video that was my first youtube video uh, activity based meditation you know oh, because oh. i truly believe in that yes so please that. kindly uh, yeah the viewers can go and watch that also because they say na we need to be productive and when we are productive we are nourishing our soul and our mind and you know it will work wonders Yeah. So activity based meditation is actually, you know, as you were saying, sitting in silence is an advanced stage. That is also good. Yes. Uh, that is like an advanced stage. But yes. when you are a beginner, activity based meditation is uh, the one, the 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 thing which you can practice. You know, so it can be like you are doing painting, you are doing art, you are going for a nature walk, you are doing crochet, any yes. kind of activity, yes. any kind of a hobby which you love to do it for yourself. and then you do that and you are indulged totally 100% there yeah so this i call i have named it you know i i specifically call it activity based meditation where you can be so you also be productive and then of course for others also that's actually a really good name for it i'd say and uh, i think a lot of people would resonate with that because they'd rather do that than sit down and do the more advanced stage so um that's really good to know thank you for, thank you for that Okay um so lots of things you've learned from living in India and growing up in India I mean my mom was brought up there in Delhi and her and her sister who's actually 20 years older than her so she's almost like her mother um she uh. she has so many different things like if you get sick and you just drink her she'll say just drink this or drink that and you'll be better you don't need any medication from the chemist um, and there's so many natural things I I I believe that yep. come from Asia uh, which the western world are now adopting aren't they um uh, so yeah it's great to learn okay so the next question is um it's 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 really related to our audience actually and and um, i relate to it as well so a lot of the um women in the western world they live very hectic very busy uh you know full schedules very very um crazy high stress lives right and a lot of them actually don't know about mindfulness they're not aware of it so they'll do things like go for a massage have a facial get their nails done you know things like that um go for a run a lot of people do engage in uh, physical sports but they are not aware of this other side which is about the holistic lifestyle so what i want from you is i want to i want you to advise our audience and me <laughs> about what what can you recommend about how a western women can start to look after themselves in terms of uh, uh living or approaching a holistic lifestyle 
Yeah, nowadays I know. Nowadays stress is everywhere, right? <laughs> well, I feel you know. Uh, first of all, never take stress because when we take stress, it really uh, lowers your immunity. So first of all, this awareness, you know, itself will uh, take your stress away <laughs> because whenever you are taking stress, you are actually hitting your immunity straight away. And when your immunity is down, then you are not productive. So it's always good to be stress free, relaxed, first of all. And second, th second thing is, of course, indulge yourself in some or other hobby. So as we have discussed, you know, activity based meditation, just start with that. So you can just uh, in, indulge yourself in some activity or some kind of a thing which you love doing it for yourself and take self care. Because normally people think that self care is, uh, you know, um, is very selfish, but no, you have to take care of yourself first so that you are uh, able to take care of many others. So the best self-care will be like, you know, take care of your thoughts and minds. Take, take care of your diet. Go for a healthy lifestyle. So other than that, I'll say uh, don't compare yourself. You Because nowadays, you know, it's a lot, lot of competition. Go with your own pace. Don't compare yourself with other people's achievements or their performance. Just go with your... Um, flow with, you know, just go with the flow of your own capacities and try to compare yourself with your own, uh, you know, um, previous, like, the, if I'm like this good, I want to be this good to tomorrow, you know, so just increase your capacity with your own self. Don't compare with any other, but your own self. And uh, always try to, you know, uh, uh, steal away time to go within yourself, meditation. And because that is a beautiful uh, gift you can give to yourself, just be in silence, do breathing exercise. Uh, because when you're, you know, breathing slowly and, uh, you know, uh, fast breathing is like you are in tension or stress. So just relax your mind. So you just focus your uh, attention to your breathing. And then, you know, you know that, okay, I have to slow down, calm down. Your breathing have lot of to you know to do with your internal body what's happening inside and also take care of your thoughts because when you're meditating actually then you are more aware of your thoughts so they say uh, they say you know, if you it's a big thing taking care of your thoughts but it become very easy when you are calm and um, uh, you're calm and composed it's very easy to see your mind thoughts and then you can control your thoughts like, oh, I don't want to think this. And okay, this is a good thought, you know, you can direct yourself towards that. And try to uh, keep yourself away from any kind of a negativity, any kind of a negativity. It can be like a thoughts, it can be people around, it can be some situations. So try to see the positive side. And that only will happen when you are yourself, you know, a little calm down and slow down, not in a race or mm. stressing around. Yeah. And uh, I always believe, Nari, that don't run for happiness, you know, stay happy and then do your duties, whatever small little things you're doing, do that with staying happiness first. So don't run after happiness that, oh, I do this pedicure and I will feel happy. Oh, I'd watch this movie and I will feel happy. I do. No, happiness will never come like that, you know. So you have to just stay in present moment, stay mindful, stay happy, and then do your anything you're doing. It can be your office job. It can be an interaction with your child. It can be interaction with your colleagues. It can be any interaction. It can be anything you're doing. But just first stay happy, be contented, and then perform whatever you want to perform. What do you think? What is your opinion about it? beautiful advice there i'm just taking everything in and absolutely everything you said was just so beautiful and really deep you know if, if only in life you know we could live and do all of those things um in parallel um you know we can work towards it and um as much of it we definitely did. um yes. but yeah um one thing you know like like i said about people living highly stressed lives like 
you know, it really affects their behaviors. It makes people irritable. It makes them impatient. It makes them angry. And, you know, I can see this in people. And I, and I think, you know, they haven't they don't have that m uh, mindfulness intelligence, uh, basically, to, to look after their well-being, to, to go inside and um, resolve their internal issues. Like like what you said about breathing, that that's one of the most profound ways that we can actually um, look after our well-being. And we, how often in a day do people think, oh, let me just uh, focus on my breath for a minute? You don't. You just carry on with your day. You're probably yeah. breathing fast and slow throughout different points of the day when you're highly stressed. You, you know, you might have like even people have tightness in their chest. Um, but really, if you breathe correctly, you, you can sort out quite a lot of internal um, issues. Um, like they say, the, the Kapalabhati breathing that I've, I've done before, that's really, really useful where you hold your breath and then you release it. And, you know, I would normally only do that in a yoga class. I wouldn't think, oh, let me do it in the morning. But but really to be healthy. I mean, my, my nana, as in my dad's, my mum's father, he used to do it when we were kids. And I remember we used to watch him and we used to laugh and think, oh, what is he doing? Like holding his nose and breathing out of his nostril. But really, it was one of the most intelligent um, things. He was living a yes. holistic life. Um, and then the other thing I, I say about what you said about emotions and being mindful and not engaging in negative energy, not comparing yourself to others, going at life at your own pace. I totally um, resonate with this because, as they say, um, you are what you feel. And uh, there's a there's a famous quote which goes something like um, no ship in, in the in the can ever sink unless all of the sea enters it. it that's the only way it can sink. So for a human mm -hmm. being. If you cannot sink if you don't let those external in in external influences actually become you. So if you're able to battle it out and still be yourself, you can still stay strong and resilient regardless of all the negative um, connotations, of negative um, you know influences mm -hmm. around you. Because we all have it, right? We have different people, mm -hmm. different exper experiences. We're not able to control everybody that we work with. Some part, some maybe sometimes family we can't choose. Um, you know, there can be difficult people in every um every different sort of, uh, situation but it's about you keeping yourself strong regardless and that's what you call resiliency so from what you're telling me holistically if you're living holistically you are a very re resilient individual and that would explain why Hema when every time I see you you always inspire me you're always happy you've got amazing advice to share and you know it gives it motivates and encourages me and I love to have people around me like that so you know thank you so much for all that you're doing so far but before we finish, I do want to ask you, what are your top tips that you want to leave our audience with um, for well-being um, and happiness? Top tip is that, you know, live your life uh, to the fullest and that only can uh, possible when you're living in present moment. You know, whatever you're doing, try to be very mindful and enjoy that moment. Because once it is gone, then they say Nanari, past is regret and future is pain, suffering. So don't get into that. Neither on past, not in future. Yeah. Just be now. Yeah. Because just, you know, this moment pass away and it become past and, yeah. you know, then you regret. So don't let that regret sink in you. Enjoy this moment. And uh, yeah. And uh, yes, whenever you take out time, because nowadays everybody is on a computer, so just, you know, relax your body. So I apply this 20-20 rule. So every, after 20 minutes, take a, you know, this, um, what do you call this, a uh, traffic break. You know, we have this um, traffic control kind of a thing. So just put an alarm and every 20 minutes, get up, go and grab water. Take a like one minute breathing break. Or maybe just tapping, you know, a little bit here, relaxing your eyes. Yeah, yeah, relaxing your, you know, lymphatic, activating your lymphatic system. Just give consciously, you know, the one, two minutes to yourself and then get back to your work. But after 20 minutes, every 20 minutes, just give this kind of, you know, breaks to yourself mm -hmm. consciously. So conscious breaks. I love that. And I know a lot of people. It is Mindful like, breaks. Yeah. Yeah. Or work in the corporate world they could definitely do you know they say take a they, they, the recommendation usually is take a 10 minute break every hour so i love your 2020 because it 2020 is every three minutes i love that 
yeah that's really really good thank you so much for today i've, I've certainly learned a lot and i'm sure our audience has uh, picked up lots of uh, amazing tips from you as well so um tell us then hema if people want to know more where can they find you they can uh, find me in my instagram handle i have this uh, hema dudwal at hema dudwal and they can also find me at uh, my youtube uh, channel happiness with hema Oh, so these are two platforms they can yeah perfect and I, and I and i know personally you've got a lot of content on both of those platforms very inspiring motivating encouraging and so much knowledge you have that you're sharing with everyone i think it's amazing so uh, you know I, i would like to applaud you on the work that you're doing a lot of it is just giving back voluntarily to society and to the world and that's such a beautiful thing so um thank, thank you thank you so that. much nari and you are also doing wonderful job really that's why i you know that's why the connection is there <laughs> it's always bit it is always nice to you know uh, give your bit without any expectation and then you know that gives you a very um, different kind of a satisfaction you I, feel the purpose yeah I, I definitely agree that we've been lucky enough to connect on energy. We've connected energetically, so uh, and that uh, that connection will last. So thank you very much as well for for your compliments as well. My so, pleasure. Yeah, yeah. yeah th thank you very much, Emma. Uh, it's been a great to have you here. Um, and like I said, uh, if you want to find Emma, you know, you, she's just told you where where to look on Instagram and on YouTube. So um, also a reminder to connect with myself on Sky High Empowerment Coaching on Instagram and Sky High Leadership. They're both connected. Uh, websites coming out soon. Um, and Ladies in Leadership on YouTube and podcast. All the links are on my Instagram. So really, that's the main place to go to find everything. So um, yeah, I hope everybody has a, a lovely day and see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.